Since time immemorial, fire has been important to mankind, giving warmth, light, and protection from the forces of darkness. Wherever a few people were gathered, a fire was kept. Warmth, perhaps the first ever valuable resource to be shared by a community. Since Viking times, Danish communities have celebrated Midsummer's Eve with bonfires, a tradition that continues to this day, the fire remaining a symbol of warmth and light that brings the community together, singing of their love of their country and its landscape. Denmark is a land of rolling meadows, green and majestic woodlands, and unspoiled fjords and beaches a natural environment which the Danes value and protect, with a cultural heritage that has formed their urban development and their modern society. The Danes have moved with the times. With few heavy industries or primary resources, the Danes have long recognized that their future lies in their ingenuity, innovation, and ability to develop and organize, to create products and technologies that work and that are pleasing to the eye inspiring to the mind and, above all, a better solution to a human need. The new in harmony with the old. Over a hundred years ago, Denmark became the cradle of a new technology for heating homes and other urban buildings. As in all European cities after the Industrial Revolution, Copenhagen had grown as more people migrated to the city. The suburb of Frederiksberg no longer had land available for waste disposal, and the municipality decided to build a waste incineration facility. At this time, every house and building in Copenhagen was heated by its own boiler, fireplaces or stoves, and some Danes were looking for a better, cleaner and more economical way of heating homes and providing hot water. They decided to use surplus heat from the new waste incineration facility to provide heating and electricity to the community. The idea of moving surplus heat from one place to another had already been tried in other countries, but it was here at Frederiksberg in Denmark that one of the first viable public district heating systems based on surplus energy was established. District heating was born and the quest for better, cleaner and more economical solutions has continued here for a century, giving Danish society a unique ability to manage its energy needs and to meet the growing requirements for a clean and efficient energy policy. To see how Danish experience can be employed elsewhere, just imagine. The idea behind district heating is simple. Instead of every building having its own heat source, large heat generation plants supply energy for space and water heating to all buildings in an urban area. Using a variety of energy sources and technologies, district heating facilities produce hot water which is stored in large insulated tanks, typically at temperatures around 90 degrees Celsius. From the holding tanks, hot water is piped through a network around the community. Each building or group of buildings is served by a heat exchanger, where the heating and hot water supply for the building is heated by the district heating water. The two water systems are not mixed. The cooled district heating water is then pumped back to the heat generation facility to be heated again. The use of holding tanks allows the facility to produce heat periodically, establishing an energy reserve sufficient to heat the community for up to several days without the facility having to heat water constantly. This allows the facility to shut down heat generation at night or during weekends, or when running the boilers would be uneconomic due to low demand or fluctuating fuel costs. Given an urban area with an adequate building density and enough consumers, district heating requires less energy than the traditional method of each building having its own boiler. There are many other advantages. 
A publicly administered district heating facility is far more efficient and easier to subject to environmental control than individual boilers. And the energy supply is available 24 hours a day, with little or no maintenance for the individual consumer. A modern district heating substation in a typical house requires far less space than a central heating boiler. This compact heat exchanger can fit into a small cupboard, together with the electricity fuse board and water main. And modern technology allows the heat consumption to be metered remotely. When sitting at a desk or performing light manual work indoors, the average person produces between 50 and 100 watts of energy per hour. In a busy office, shop or indoor workplace, the inhabitants contribute to the heating of the building. Modern buildings with better insulation, architectural designs that exclude windows that can be opened, and high-density technical installations such as computers and electronic equipment often require large cooling and air conditioning systems to maintain a comfortable ambient temperature, even in the colder climate of Northern Europe. The district heating concept can also be reversed to provide district cooling. A network of pipes supplies cold water to buildings, where heat exchangers are employed to remove waste heat. In Copenhagen, a district cooling project is being developed to serve buildings in the city centre. Cold seawater from the harbour is pumped to a new cooling facility, where it's used to provide coolant water through a network of pipes to the surrounding business community. District cooling offers scale of magnitude advantages similar to district heating. A single cooling facility is much more efficient than separate air conditioning systems, each with its own energy source. The air conditioning and cooling systems of traditional city centre buildings usually require a lot of space and often result in unsightly rooftop installations. In this building, the editorial offices of one of Denmark's leading daily newspapers, district cooling gives a comfortable working environment and has released valuable floor space. The entire building is connected to the district cooling network via this small heat exchange system located in the cellar. And the rooftop area, once the location of a large air conditioning plant, is now a staff canteen with a skyline view of the city. The worldwide potential for district cooling is enormous. In many emerging economies in the Far East, the growing use of individual electric air conditioning systems is creating a demand for power which often exceeds the supply capacity. District cooling can accommodate such growth whilst offering an efficient and environmentally preferable solution. The concept of district heating offers a unique flexibility with regard to the choice of fuel. As a centralised alternative to individual heat generation, district heating is a cleaner and more efficient way of utilising fossil fuels such as coal, oil and natural gas. As a viable alternative to fossil fuels, district heating can be based on a wide variety of CO2 neutral renewable energy sources, including straw, wood chips, wood pellets, biogas, geothermal heat and solar energy. Many Danish facilities can operate on more than one fuel type and most can be easily converted to suit changing fuel economics. This allows the use of locally available fuels, which may not be available all year, as well as combining fuel types to achieve the optimal economy and the lowest environmental impact. The major economic savings and environmental gains are achieved when district heating is largely based on the utilisation of waste heat, typically hot water from the cooling processes of industrial facilities that otherwise would be wasted. Another valuable source of energy is that of waste incineration. The cooling water from the incineration process is sent to the local district heating network. 
the cooling processes of many industrial facilities, such as cement factories and petrochemical refineries, produce waste heat in quantities that make integration with a district heating system viable. Today, all major power generation and waste incineration facilities in Denmark supply hot water to the local district heating network. 80% of all Danish district heating comes from surplus energy. The synergy between district heating and industry has several advantages. The energy used by industry will be consumed anyway, so the recovery and use of surplus heat represents a major reduction in the consumption of fuel by the district heating utilities. This approach has reduced dependence on imported fossil fuels to the extent that Denmark has been self-sufficient energy-wise since 1997. Likewise, the use of surplus energy represents a dramatic reduction in the total CO2 and particle emissions and the treatment of waste fuel byproducts such as particulate and bottom ash. In Denmark, power generation, waste incineration and district heating are fully integrated, making it feasible to formulate and implement a national energy policy in ways that would never be possible with individual solutions. A traditional electricity generation plant is relatively inefficient, even for a modern facility. Typically, only 40% of the energy consumed is converted to electricity, whilst 60% is wasted in the form of heat loss. A combined heat and power solution, CHP, gives increased energy efficiency. For the same total energy consumption and electricity output, 50% of the energy consumed is converted to district heating, reducing the energy lost as waste heat to 10%. The economic and environmental advantages of district heating in Denmark are well documented. During the decade from 1996 to 2006, district heating resulted in a reduction of energy consumed per square meter and a similar reduction in the consumption of fossil fuels. Likewise, CO2 emissions were also dramatically reduced. Seen in relation to the economic growth in the same period, this represents a considerable increase in energy efficiency. The advantages of district heating are now all too obvious, yet they have been recognized in Denmark for decades. The first district heating utilities were based partly on surplus heat from waste incineration, and throughout the last century, especially during the fuel shortages of the Second World War and the oil crisis of the 70s, district heating came to rely heavily on surplus energy sources. The Danish energy sector is mostly under public control and there's a long tradition for democratic involvement in local utility companies. Yet the concept of district heating is equally suitable for operation by privately owned utilities because the economics make sense, and not just in the big cities. There was a time when farmers would simply burn surplus straw following the harvest. In 1989, the burning of straw and stubble was banned for environmental reasons. Following the long-established tradition in Denmark for local utility cooperatives, many rural communities saw this as an opportunity to develop a district heating network. The benefits were twofold. The community gained access to a cheaper and cleaner energy source, and the farmers found a new and profitable local market for their surplus straw. Many small-scale district heating utilities based on renewable fuels can produce more energy than the local community can consume via district heating. Therefore, such utilities are designed to produce both heat and electricity. Today, these combined heat and power utilities are an important part of the Danish rural energy policy. District heating utilities based on fossil fuels are also pursuing new energy sources. In 2007, this natural gas-powered combined heat and power utility in Brastrup 
established a solar energy park to reduce the consumption of natural gas. Adjacent to the facility, 8,000 square meters of solar panels produce approximately 4 million kilowatt hours of energy per year, the equivalent of the annual heat consumption of 300 homes, around 10% of the facility's output. A 2,000 cubic meter holding tank allows the facility to store water heated during the day for use at night. This is the world's largest combined heat and power facility that includes solar energy production. Many Danish district heating utilities were established since the 70s based on fossil fuels. In recent years, urban growth and the development of new surplus energy sources has encouraged utilities in the major conurbation areas to establish wider networks that connect many previously separate local networks. One example is to be found in the four municipalities of Weiler, Fredericia, Middelfart and Kolling, where a publicly owned company operates a network between the district heating systems in a region with 55,000 consumers. This network relies mainly on surplus heat from a power station, a waste incineration plant and from local industry. The Shell Oil Refinery in Fredericia is a major supplier of surplus heat to this regional network. From the network's control room in Fredericia, hot water can be directed between towns according to where the cheapest energy is available and where the energy is required by consumers. As a result, many of the older district heating facilities in the region are able to operate without using their older and more expensive fossil fuel-based generators, except during winter peak demand periods. The entire network is controlled 24 hours a day from Fredericia, reducing the operation and maintenance costs of the individual local facilities. Surplus heat distributed to the network reduces the annual CO2 emission of the region by 225,000 tonnes, the equivalent of burning 130 million litres of fuel oil. With increased concerns about the environment, climate change and energy economy and self-sufficiency, District heating and cooling is an obvious choice for public and private utility companies in many countries. In this context, Denmark has a lot to offer. With over a century's hands-on experience in developing and operating district heating systems, Danish industry has evolved as the world leader in district heating and cooling technology. Denmark is the home of the world's largest manufacturer of pre-insulated pipes. The concept of pre-insulation was invented here in 1960 and is now the industry standard worldwide. Denmark is also the home of Europe's foremost manufacturer of pumps and pump control systems to move liquid media in complex industrial and civil installations, such as in district heating and cooling systems and also the home of one of the world's largest manufacturers of thermostats and thermostatic control systems, essential to the efficient and reliable operation of any district heating and cooling utility. And hundreds of companies in the Danish energy sector have developed specialized equipment and technologies to meet many of the core requirements of industrial and public utility systems, providing boilers, flue gas treatment technologies, state-of-the-art control systems, flow metering and all the other essential components in a modern district heating or cooling system. Denmark is also the home of unparalleled expertise in the fields of specification, systems design and project management, with the combined resources of a wide variety of independent consulting engineers as well as some of the prominent utility operators in the Danish energy sector, who also offer consultancy services to overseas clients. Thanks to a rapidly growing export market, employment in the Danish district heating and cooling sector has increased fourfold since 2003, providing lasting employment in local communities for over 9,000 people. 
With over 60% of Danish homes and buildings served by district heating, the industry has long recognized the importance of its export markets. Many Danish district heating manufacturers and consultants have established operations in other countries and have a wide experience of adapting technologies and solutions to local needs and conditions. The establishment of a new district heating or cooling system is more than a simple question of technology and infrastructure. To harvest all the potential benefits requires that district heating or cooling becomes an integrated component in a wider energy policy. Through a partnership between the main suppliers to the industry and Denmark's major district heating utility companies, advice is available to local government and utility companies in other countries. For many nations, district heating or cooling are new and untried concepts, which raise many new questions regarding the creation of a network infrastructure and the adaptation of current market practices to suit a collective heating or cooling model. Denmark has the experience, manufacturing capacity and engineering know-how necessary to successfully develop district heating and cooling systems anywhere. Whilst conserving energy and reducing waste have always been sound economic goals for any industrial development, Local and central governments and the energy industry worldwide now face new and more urgent challenges. The greater the commitment of the international community to reducing CO2 emissions and combating climate change, the greater the need for real savings in the energy we consume. District heating and cooling offer a unique opportunity. No other technologies can offer such vital improvements in environmental performance nor such dramatic reduction in total energy consumption without reducing the standard of living or productivity of a nation. The evidence to support this claim is all too clear in Denmark. Just imagine, in Europe, district heating currently enjoys a market share of less than 10%. If all the existing infrastructure was modernized and the market share were doubled, European energy consumption would fall by an amount equivalent to the total annual energy consumption of Poland. And CO2 emissions would fall by 400 million tons per year, equivalent to the total annual CO2 emissions from fuel consumption in France. Now, just imagine the unimaginable. What would be the effect on CO2 emissions and energy consumption if all European countries were to achieve a market share for district heating of 60% equal to that of Denmark? And what would be the effect if a similar share of existing air conditioning was met by district cooling? Seen in this perspective, do not many of the ambitious goals of the current climate debate seem to be within our reach? Imagination might just be the solution. <laughs>